This is Vermont. I came with Warframe Breakdown, where we break down Warframe so you can be broken in Warframe. So what we're going to go over today is Necros. Um, so Necros, this is our very first Warframe Breakdown, where we go over every single one of his abilities, his uh, attributes, what makes him really, really great, and more importantly, why would people even want him in a mission, and what makes Necros the greatest farming frame in all of Warframe. Let's get started. So, first off um, with Necros is his very unique set of kits. If you've played Necros before and you found out that you were really, really, really squishy and you couldn't quite figure out why you were super duper squishy, it might be because uh, he has some unique synergies that you need to be aware of first before you even remotely get involved with him. And to start with those unique synergies, we got to understand a little thing, what I like to do. When I come to make builds in Warframe, I like abilities that capitalize on other abilities that activate kind of chains of reactions and kind of cycles inside of a, a particular Warframe's ability. And you'll notice immediately right off the bat a couple of unique features. When you're comparing Necros to other Warframes, you'll see that he has... A high amount of shields compared to the average Warframe. Nothing like Hildren. He has nothing on Hildren in terms of uh, shields for Warframes, but just his unique kit. Just you can see his shields start off with 150. If we were to compare him to a lot of other basic Warframes um, that you would know normally know as tanks, you know, zero shields, um, Haro, he has 150, so very comparable there. Uh, Revenant has a little bit more with 225, but on his release, Necros had pretty high shields, and so the pitfall that a lot of people fall into is immediately assume that because he has a little bit larger amount of shields at max rank, that therefore what we need to do, as you can see, 450 shields at max rank, we need to dump as much redirection as we possibly can into this Warframe. Um, and when it comes to that, that's one of the things that you can't fall into with Necros is thinking that shields is where it's at. The problem with shields, and everybody will tell you that it's played Warframe more than a week, <laughs> the problem with shields is there are a lot of elements and there's a lot of enemy damage that they deal that completely bypass your shields altogether and just go directly for that health. And with Necros, his unique kit allows you to kind of utilize that damage going towards your health um, as a means to regenerate things. So let me t show you what I mean and what I've been yabbering on all about. So... This is my particular build, and as you can see, right off the get-go, I've thrown um, a lens on, and the reason why I've thrown a lens on is because as a MR30, I have come to find that every new person I come across, in some form or fashion, needs to have a little bit of help grinding out resources, and because they need help grinding out resources, I end up using the king of farming to grind out those resources. So, as you can see, my necro, uh, I got a... Obviously, that is to help me generate all my focus. I have six Forma. That's right. I have dumped six Forma into this Warframe. It's got nothing on any other YouTuber that's dumped their thousand or whatever ridiculous into. It's just that in order to really get a decent Necros, you need to throw in at least four before you start seeing some true, genuine results with him. And you'll say, like, hey, I'm kind of sort of taking out these level 200 guys, and I'm not sort of dying at the same time. So... We'll start off with that. So the most important three mods, I would say, when you're building your Necros, is you need to have Despoil. It's a must-have mod. Despoil, Shield of Shadows, and Equilibrium. Why are these three mods important? Because they, uh, they go off of these two abilities. So let's see if I have a standard set. I might have actually already <laughs> taken him through the helmet a couple of times. Let's see if I got a standard set of uh, kits with him. I do not have a standard set kit with him, so <laughs> let me go to the helmet, that way you can see... Well, we'll start off with his very first ability here, and then we'll go to the helmet so you can truly see the other abilities that normal would be here. As you can see on every single one of my um, kits, I've actually taken out this middle ability. So we'll go like this, so you can see the full kit of Necros. We'll just throw that in a the chat there real quick. And if we pull up Necros, oh jeez, <laughs> I did not anticipate that. Cool, DE's like, yeet? <laughs> so, um, he has four abilities, and his four abilities, starting with Soul Punch, um, is he literally punches life force out of enemies, and he uses them as a projectile. Um, 
And because he literally uses them as projectile, it has an initial at max rank of 500 impact, at max rank 25% HP for an instant KO. Sends the enemy flying into other enemies, dealing damage to them. Um, if you have 50 impact while they're flying and 100 impact as a small AoE after they land. Um, and it's very, it's essentially all the ability, it's force push, guys. It's force push. And you cannot beat force push. I love force push. Um, his second ability, which is called Terrify, I'll go to my helmet so you can actually see that because I have subsumed every Warframe in the game. So it's very easy to pull up these abilities that may or may not have been lost to that abyss. Here we go. So we got Terrify, and here's Terrify. Terrify, what it does is it takes all the enemies within an AoE, starting at a radius of 15 meters, and it has a base duration of 25 seconds, and it only affects 20 enemies. Okay, you heard that correctly. And that enemy affected is not increased by ability strength or ability duration or ability efficiency. It doesn't increase. So you'll only get 20 enemies that are terrified of you. The enemies, when they are activated and they are terrified, they do have a small armor reduction. In addition to having that armor reduction, they run away. So you can only get 20 enemies, and they run away. And we'll find out quickly that that might be like, you'll think you'll be doing this, and you'll think you'll be saving, but there'll be that one guy, that that 21st guy, that 22nd guy, that was didn't get impacted, didn't get affected at all, and he's going to yeet your hide, and he's going to put you on the ground faster than you can say oops. So... If there's any ability to switch out, from my experience, it's been this ability because there's so many other armor stripping abilities and there's other synergies that you can have with the Helmuth that can actually completely negate all damage that is coming to you on top of what your fourth already does um, in addition to that. So it does have an augment. Enemies that are affected by the augment, they're slowed down. Um, this does very little to protect Necro's very, very utility and oftentimes just slows down your gameplay. It prevents you from spawning in new enemies because they're not dying, and it just slows you down altogether. Now, this is the two important abilities, which I've been talking up to this point, almost kind of like jabbering on about, kind of saying yada yada, not making a whole lot of sense here. But these last two abilities are the most important part of Necro's, and you're going to find out that these last two abilities are what ultimately save you in the end. And the first ability is Desecrate. Desecrate, what it does is all the dead bodies that drop within an AoE basically get desecrated and they drop additional loot. And it's very, very nice. All the fallen enemies within the AoE um, do stack with other Necroses up to 54% per body. Um, and I say per body like that, and we're going to go in a little bit further detail on what I mean by that. Um, and it does cost 10 energy per corpse with the potential for enough energy for all bodies. So if you increase your energy capacity, that means you can desecrate more bodies that quicker. Um, does have that, but you're going to find out that you might not necessarily need this. This is also affected by ability efficiency, so that you can decrease how much energy you're spending per body that's being desecrated. Um, and the last and final ability um, that we have is going to be Necrosis Fourth, and it is... Uh, it is Shield of Shadows. So Shield of Shadows, what it does is it does have a high drain. Um, all the enemy, like previous enemies that you kill, they go into this kind of mo mode where they're harvesting, and you can harvest the bodies that of the enemies that you've killed, and then you bring them back to life to fight alongside you, as you can see in the little clip there. Their ability damage that they deal and the health multipliers that they have um, are impacted by ability strength, and their decay is impacted by ability duration and ability efficiency. And then if you have the Shield of Shadows document, as you can see, I can have those guys travel up to 95 meters away from me, essentially across the entire map, and they will still reduce the damage I take. Now, the reason why I feel like ability strength is really, really important on this build um, is for two reasons. Essentially, when you have the Shield of Shadows augment, the enemies that you bring back to life are an extension of your health. They take damage for you. If you are a person standing in the middle amongst all the enemies and you get shot directly, not only is it 95% of it is damage reduced, but that 95% damage is actually given to the enemies you brought back. So lower enemies or your non-heavy target enemies, um, when they are brought back, they tend to be the very first to go because they can't absorb all that heavy hitting damage that you're taking from either that heavy gunner or that Nox. But if you have a Nox on your side, or if you have an Orb Spider from Fortuna on your side, 
it can take a lot more of that damage because its health capacity is a lot higher. And then, of course, you do have the health decay on top of that um, to prevent it from lasting essentially forever. So the way the my build works here with Necros is we have Shield of Shadows, we have Despoil, and we have Equilibrium. And Shield of Shadows takes the damage that you take and gives it to your guys that you bring back, and Despoil makes it so that you drop additional loot. But in addition to, well, sorry, not additional loot, it makes it so that you consume health instead of energy. So um, it does have a small health and energy drop chance increase, which is very important because if you drop health orbs, and you have Equilibrium on, that's how you get all your energy back. So, as you can see, I do not have any Primed Glow on my build, and that's because every single one of my abilities, when I'm using them in-game, they synergize with that, so I will make a cast, and I can spam any one of my abilities, and I'll still be able to use it however I want. So, I have Vitality to increase health, I have Overextended to increase the range at which my drones can be away from me and still take the damage for me i have the ability strength so that they can take more hits they can deal more damage and they can survive harder hits all together and then i also have this little fun one which is a really nice augment now this augment um i keep on usually when i'm going up against low tier enemies but i also come up with i have when i have newer players with me in my squad what i'll do is i have this augment on and i can bring them back and i be, can be across the map and they can survive and still get their affinity. I have sure-footed on, prime sure-footed, just so that I don't get knocked down ever. Literally, it's impossible for the enemy to knock me down. I might get like a little bounce back, but I won't ever fall, so I don't ever have that time where I have to spend just trying to get up. Then a couple of other things that help out my equilibrium synergies, I have Arcane Energizer, which is good for the team, as well as myself, where it gives us and them energy. And then I have Arcane Guardian. I've heard of people like switching this out for Arcane Pulse, so if you have Arcane Pulse, that's a good one too, where when you pick up the the health orbs, it gives you massive amounts of health back. That's a good one to have in addition. I like to have the Arcane Guardian so I can have the additional survivability. Um, I know you could technically switch it out for, there's a better one, um, Arcane, uh, um, Arcane, uh, oh, shoot, what is it, Bodyguard? Yeah, there it is. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> There's a Arcane Tanker, there it is. So Arcane Tanker, and there's another Arcane, basically they relatively do the same percentage, but they give you a crazy amount of armor um, relatively quickly, similar to one another, so that you can also have that synergizing with you as well. So here we go, we'll go ahead and we'll take out, let's see, what kind of, um, you know, we'll take out, nope. <laughs> let's, uh, you know, we, we will do this one. We'll just do this one just for kicks. But we'll just go in, and for demonstration, we'll go ahead and put this on to public so people can join us so you can kind of see how these abilities work so that you can see that I'm not pulling things out of my hide. So, um, again, ultimately what we want to be doing is we want to be killing bodies. Oh, there's another unique synergy that Necros. I almost forgot about it. I need to show you the rest of my loadout because there's synergies even between the weapons. So, before we go into this mission, so I have on a Summer Prime and Akajara, and I got a Parasesis. And the reason why I picked these three weapons is for one reason and one reason only. And that is all, they are all high slash weapons. So, if I pull out my Paras, if, if I look at my Parasesis, I don't have any elements other than slash. And that's important because you'll see that as I slice these guys open, they're going to fall into a whole bunch of pieces. And it's, we're not going to be desecrating one body, but we're going to be turning one guy into five bodies. <laughs> and then we'll be desecrating each one of those bodies five different times. So let me see. I think I have a buddy on that also will join us. He might have a Necros. Let's see. Nope, I don't think he's on it quite yet, but not to worry. We'll see when they are on. I'll write out chat here to see if I can get another Necros so you can see the other ability with the third. There we go. There we go. We got our ad out. We'll see who joins us and who doesn't. And we'll just go into a random quick mission here. We'll go to Earth. Um, I'm picking Earth because Slash bypasses enemy armor. It does not bypass enemy shields. So with that being the case, we want to go... Typically, if you have Slash weapons, you want to go up against armored units. If you are going up against Corpus units, you might want to throw on other elements like Toxin. 
it's not ideal to be throwing on toxin um, to get rid of your synergy with your third, but it's a good thing you can possibly do just so that you can make sure that you can actually kill the enemy if you're planning on doing like farming and say like steel path or something where the enemies have really really high health and armor counts. So abilities that as you might have saw that I recommend that you go ahead and throw on Necros. Um, as you can see I'm using the one with Mirage's Eclipse and the reason why I chose Mirage, Mirage's Eclipse because it does 300% additional damage increase on top of the shield of shadows making the damage decrease absolutely insane. So I'm just going to pull up my Desecrate here. Now, with the build I have, my Desecrate will never go down. Ever. It doesn't. It's impossible for it to. Because as I kill these guys, it comes right back up. And my health needs to be essentially at like 5 before I stop really losing things and I'm unable to activate it. But, if you do things and you play your cards right, like if you throw on Grendel's uh, Nourish, you get health back instantaneously. And then you also get a Toxin Damage buff on top of that. Um, and then you also get armor, and you get an energy regen, and it's just, you get all sorts of crazy multipliers on top of that. So as you can see, my third is still pulsing in the bottom right, and that means it's still active. So as it still pulses, it's still active, and we're still getting the benefit. And as you can see, this guy, he's going through, watch these bodies, there's two bodies, he nice and neatly sliced that up, nice and neatly for us. Let's see if we can get one to go into several pieces. Let's see. Oh, I desecrated it way too fast. There we go. Sometimes you gotta move really, really quickly. So I'm slicing this up, and as you can see, I sliced him up into three parts there, and I made him drop three additional drops off of this table. So he got two additional body parts. We got boom, boom. As you can see, we got two drops. We got 50 energy back that time. And if you have... Now, so if I got two body parts going, and I'm able to slice those guys into two... And Necro stacks 54%, and it stacks additively. So it's like, you have a 54%, if another Necros comes in, that's another 54% on top of that. Um, so the when they both desecrate, it's actually like 116%. Essentially, you guarantee that each body part is going to give an additional piece of loot. So as you can see, I already got two, so that means we'd be popping out like four, not just two. And if we had two other Necroses, it'd be like a 200... Sorry, it would be 108 if it was two of us, and then 216 if there were four of us. So they would be popping out with at least two additional drops on top of whatever else we're doing. So if you're trying to go, for an example, get um, like ferrite or credits or just anything, if you can get that guy's drop table to drop it more often, you can physically get more out of it just from making them drop more. So I'm slicing their bodies up. I'm procking as much slash as I possibly can to get them all to explode so we can get them slicing into bits and pieces so I can desecrate all their nice little bodies so that we can get more loot. Um, and I'll just go ahead and activate that and didn't even just like one shot of the guy didn't even need to work too hard. Granted I have a whole bunch of other crazy buffs popping up in the top right corner that are also helping me out including my Kavat. My Kavat is actually increasing my crit tiers, so there's that that's going on for me. And we're just going through these guys, just ripping them apart and getting all sorts of blood. Now, that wasn't a particularly hard mission, so you didn't really get to see me using the um, first, but here, let me go ahead and use the fourth while we're waiting for our guy to extract. And as you can see, I killed seven guys at least. And I was pull, able to pull all seven back. Now you can see I have those lines coming off of me. Those lines would be like if I were to get hit, the damage would travel down those lines to the guys I brought back, and the guys would take the damage instead. And so that's how that works. Um, so essentially what really works with Necros is going to be your a lot of your energy regens. So we went over Mirage's Eclipse. Mirage's Eclipse is nice because also you have that passive effect when you have the dark that you don't take any damage because the enemy physically can't hit you. Grendel's Nourish, you get the damage buff on top of the health regen. Blood Altar, you just straight up get a lot of health relatively quickly. And so those are the abilities I recommend that you go 